Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the Lead X Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Hey everyone, Kevin Cruz here. Welcome to another week of the Lead X Leadership Show. I am trying to help you to fulfill your full potential. And because it's a Friday show, I don't have a guest. We're not going to learn from an expert. We're just going to hear me rant about all kinds of stuff. And hopefully there'll be a few learnings or at least some entertainment along the way. And in a minute, I'm actually going to tell you, I'm going to reveal, I'm going to reveal <laughs> how to write a great book this year with only two hours a week. And I'm, I'm not joking. I'm going to get real specific about it. But first, just in the spirit of sharing, what a day I am having. It started with an interview with the Wall Street Journal. And so uh, fingers crossed, you never know, like maybe we'll get not approved by the editor. Or maybe we'll only get one sentence in the article. But the Wall Street Journal has been um, interviewing a whole bunch of LeadX customers and buyers and end users and interviewed me. Uh, this is the third time. And Next week, we're, they're supposed to run an article about artificial intelligence and coaching and leadership development. And uh, it's great. I think the, the journalist is really spending a lot of time to try to understand the field, even though she's not you know, naturally familiar with it. So that was just really exciting and fun to talk to the Wall Street Journal. Um, I am leaving in 15 minutes to get down to, uh, I'm going to be interviewed on Sirius Satellite Radio out of the Wharton uh, campus in Pennsylvania. It's going to be a live radio program. I can't really remember the last time I did a live radio program. They're going to have like call in and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be fun. And of course, I just, you know, got off uh, a, a Zoom interview that's going to be on my podcast with the legendary Bob Berg. And that's part of what's just so fun about I don't know, writing a book or doing a podcast is you just get to meet a lot of other like just cool people and quote unquote influencers. And it's a lot of fun. So it's been a heck of a day. Uh, the media is winding down from the launch of my you know book. Great leaders have no rules. Hopefully you already bought it. Hopefully you've already left a short, honest review up on Amazon.com or on Goodreads or on Kobo. Is that still a thing or do they go out of business? I don't even know. Um, wherever you want to leave a review. But okay, here's the thing. We did this crazy offer, whereas for everyone who pre-ordered a copy of Great Leaders Have No Rules, and by the way, the date of this podcast is April. I'm trying to do the math in my head. It's going to be like April 12th or 13th at this episode of 2019. So if you're listening to this and it's way in the future, don't hunt me down for this bonus. But um, for everybody that pre-ordered the book, we gave like $250 worth of bonuses, including I did two live webinars on, you know, how to write a book in two hours a day, how to, you know, whether to do traditional or independent, how to market your book. I mean, we just, I took everybody's questions. It was a lot of fun. So I can't like give you everything. It was I, each webinar went on for like over two hours at night. You know, it was just like, drinking coffee, drinking bourbon, having a good time with everybody. I think we had 60 people, 70 people uh, live and then many more with the uh, with the recording. But I wanted to give you just this core tidbit of how to write a book in two hours a week, because I think most people want to write a book someday. Uh, I think if you don't think you want to write a book, you should consider it. It would be, you know, if you do it for personal reasons, a great thing to like just leave a legacy, leave a legacy for your kids and for your family. If you want to be a consultant, if you want to be a coach, if you want to be a public speaker, you know, writing the book lends credibility, it generates leads, it introduces you to other influencers, a lot of good reasons um, to, to write a book. And yet I think most people, it's always something they will do someday. And it's because it's just this big, difficult blob goal dream. You know, it's like if I said, oh, I want to I want to build my own house someday. Wouldn't that be cool? And it kind of would be cool, but I never do it because I don't know how to use a hammer. <laughs> I don't know how to read a blueprint. I don't know how to make a blueprint. Like I, I don't know how to build a house and it seems massive and huge. I wouldn't know where to start. 
And I think so many people think of writing a book. They have it in them, but they don't even know where to start. So I want you to think about writing a book as a math problem. <laughs> and you're like, great, I'm no good in math either. I'd rather write a book than think about math. But it's a simple math problem. So when I, you know, I've written nine books more, if you count some of the short books that I've written. Um, and I've, uh, you, you know, Great Leaders is a, is a um, I don't know, normal sized book that's in the bookstores and blah, blah, blah with a traditional publisher. And I did We that way. I did a book back when I was 30 years old through Josie Bass. So I've done traditionally published books. And then 15 Secrets, Successful Know About Time Manager. That was an independently published book. I've written a lot of books and I plan to release about a book a year um, for the rest of my life. And having said all that, if you said, hey, can you write a book? I'd say, no way. Like that sounds massive, huge and hard. I can't write a book. And the only way I write a book is by not thinking about writing a book. I break it down. And so if you want to write a full size book and get a traditional publisher, that book is going to be about 50,000 words. So remember this 50,000 words or jot a note down. Now, if you, I actually think smaller books are better. First of all, they're, they're faster and easier for you to write as the author. But I think people like smaller books. People don't have time to read. People don't read anymore. And so uh, if I'm independently publishing a book in the future, it will always be shorter. Now, for me, I, that'd be about half the normal size. So 25,000 words. But let's assume a worst case scenario. You want to write a big out full normal book that you'll be proud to walk into a Barnes and Noble and grab it off the shelf and wave it in the air wave it in the air like you just don't care. That's 50,000 words, a lot of words. But don't think about it like that. So most books have about 10 chapters. Now, my 15 Secrets book had 15-ish chapters. My Great Leaders book has 10 chapters. Maybe someday I'll write a book with five chapters, but most books have 10 chapters. So now realize that each chapter, if it's 50,000 words for the book, it's 5,000 words for the chapter. Now this is becoming more reasonable, but that's still a long, that's like, that's a long college paper, 5,000 words. Like, where do I begin? That's just a pain. I got writer's block. Well, don't even think about writing a chapter at a time. Every chapter should be broken down into sections. Now, most of my books have about 10 sections and I'm not going to pick up the book right now, but like if you look at my great leaders book, each chapter will say like, um, I don't know, like, okay, so uh, uh, the open door policy is a chapter, like close your open door policy. That's chapter one. And so I always know like that my chapter is going to open with some kind of hook, like a story, a personal story or something like that. Hook the reader in. Then I'm going to have like an overview, like, well, what is the open door policy and where did it come from? And why did people think it was a good idea? That's the second section. And then I'm going to say, Here's the first problem with an open door policy. Uh, it interrupts the manager. Okay, here's another problem with the open door policy. Um, half the people never go through the open door. They're too scared. So this is a passive communication policy that doesn't work with half your people. Now, there's a third problem. The people who do come through, you're enabling them to not develop as leaders. You know, you need to train them more. You need to give them permission, blah, blah, blah. So there's three problems. So already I did story overview, three problems, that's five sections. And then I'm going to flip and I'm going to say, okay, so a solution is um, schedule office hours instead, like one hour a day. That's one solution. Another solution is don't let them come through your door unless they're also bringing a, a solution or something. That could be another, another idea. So what I'm doing is I'm crafting like three problems and three solutions. And then at the very end of the chapter, I've got like the takeaway, which is a summary. And then I have now started doing how to apply it. So how do you apply the open door policy? If you're a parent, if you're a teacher, if you're a manager, if you're um, a in the military, you know, I give all these different examples. So one way or another, I know that each chapter is going to have about 10 sections. Now it doesn't have to be cookie cutter, like, uh, you know, the, the chapter on no rules. Well, maybe that's only got, you know, two problems and maybe it's got seven solutions. I don't know. Like you can move it around once you get into it. But the idea is 
yes, start with an outline. Like what, what is your book going to be about? You know, it's going to be about, um, tea, you know, you're a tea expert. Okay. So what are your chapters going to be about? Well, maybe you're going to have, um, six chapters on the six different kinds of tea. Okay. That's great. Now, how can you put the same kind of sections in each of your chapters about tea? And it might be a personal story about the first time you discovered that tea. It might be the, um, physical description of the tea. How does it look and smell and all that? It might be a section on the history of the tea. Um, it might be different ways to prepare the best way to prepare the tea. It might be what food gets paired with the tea. Um, I don't know. I'm not a tea guy. So I kind of ran out, but whatever, you know, you want to write a book about time management. You want to want to write a book about procrastination, you know, break it into chapters and then create sort of reusable sections for each chapter. And then all you're thinking about is not how do I write a 50,000 word book or a 5,000 word chapter? It's more like, how do I write a 500 word blog post or a 750 word article or a 1000 word um, article on LinkedIn? So think about each section as a standalone article. And now again, so that's where I get to two hours a week. I'm a super slow writer, super slow, really bad. I do all the things you're not supposed to do. I'm writing and I do the research while I'm writing. I'm writing and I'm fixing spelling and typos while I'm going. I'm writing and I rewrite the first sentence five times to get it right. Like you're not supposed to do any of that. And I do all that. So it takes me about two hours to write a thousand word article, blog post section of a book. So if you can just, if you're as slow as I am, carve out two hours on a Sunday morning or 30 minutes, Monday through Thursday, you know, every morning or at lunch hour, whatever it is. And think about like, okay, this week I'm going to write one little, I'm going to write section two of chapter three and boom. And if you write it as a standalone item, one, it's going to make great reading, like every, you know, great structure would be like, what's, what's the opening? What's the hook? What's your content? What's the takeaway or an emotional close? And if you're doing that section, 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 you're just going to move that reader along. Like every chunk, every section is a gift. And as you're writing, if you want, you can post it as a blog post, you can post it to LinkedIn. So you're going to find your audience, people who are interested in your topic. You're going to build your, what they call the platform, your, your audience as you're creating your book one year from now, or sooner, if you're a faster writer or only want to write a 25,000 word book, you can do this in six months. You can do this in three months, but like, as you're writing the book, you're building your audience. And even if it's not a huge audience to like, Oh, they're going to buy a hundred thousand copies of my book. I'll bet you'll have your 100 super fans that have followed you for the year. that are being like, Oh yeah. Like I would love to, you know, uh, get a review copy and leave a review on Amazon when you launch it. Oh yeah. I'd be happy to tell my friends on Facebook about your new book. So as a first time author, that's gold. As you're writing your book, releasing little snippets, you're building up your influencers, your super fans. So that's the, um, that's the big idea. And I know it's a simple idea, but I think for a lot of people, it's going to like release them and free them up to like, I am going to start writing my book. The hardest part is what do you want to write about? What are the seven, 10, 15 chapters? And then break it down, you know, each chapter before you start it, like, okay, what are the five, 10, 15 sections inside this chapter? And then you just do it, you know, one, one chunk at a time. I hope you found value in that. And if you did, boy, there's so much you could do for me. You could leave a positive review on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify. You do know that this podcast is available on Spotify now, right? Um, you could buy a copy of Great Leaders Have No Rules. You could leave a positive re review on Amazon. And if you haven't checked out LeadX with Coach Amanda, leadx.org, there's a free trial. Man, we've come a long way since the early days. We've released book summaries. We've released goal packs. You can tell Coach Amanda uh, you want to get better at a certain area like decision making, like that's a higher executive order. She's going to give you 12 things to do in 12 weeks and she's going to check in with you once a week to make sure you're doing them. She's your accountability buddy and you're going to be so much better at decision making and there's like six other areas. Um, we're just super proud of where, where she's at today and excited about what's what's coming down the road so with that have a great weekend thank you so much for all your support 
Time is our most important asset. Thank you for giving me some of your minutes today. And remember, leadership is influence. Lead with intent.